The first question it says, it is said that those who cling to this life are not Dharma practitioners. Can Rinpoche explain how to let go of this life and what it means to be a Dharma practitioner? Thank you very much. Uh, professor, uh, Sanskrit professor, yes. <laughs> uh, this uh, new year we had a um, short meeting and uh, then this began conversation and uh, have some uh, question answers opportunity each other. Then I say, okay, why not? Then this is situation began like this today. So uh, before we do the things, we do short, uh, not for you, but for me. I need to do chantings. Mm. This uh, chanting is composed by Jabje Trugu Ujjerimboche, who is uh, Chokju Lingba's treasure revealer, Chokju Lingba's uh, uh, grandson. And uh, uh, for Buddha Dharma um, in Nepal, in Tibet, in especially uh, Himalayas place, uh, Guru Mahaguru Padma Sambhava is significant uh, importance. His um, uh, teachings, guidance, blessings. Mm. So, and uh, Guru Rinpoche, Mahan Guru Padma Sambhava's mm, treasures, teachings, reveal, they have a hundred over revealers and uh, great revealers. So, the last. Uh, in the name, the last revealer, the great one, is uh, Chuju Lingba, uh, appeared in late 18th century, so 140 years ago. So his uh, daughter, grandson, uh, daughter's grandson, Chuju Lingba's great grandson, is Chabjitrugu Jinamboche. And uh, many of the students, his students, and all the monks and nuns, we do a lot of meditation sessions, but then we have no good uh, chanting set for meditations. So Trugoji Rinpoche composed this from a variety of texts and put together uh, for uh, meditation students. And why is so important? Uh, why is so nice about this particular chanting? Um, we have a saying: they have three great masters. Um, um, throughout ages, examples. Um, first is the, the this is what Rugo Jinrinpoche is saying. The most, uh, the highest faculty, the, the best, um, how you say, the students, you can say, as a human being, is Garap Dorje, is the first uh, uh, Dzogchen master. Uh, because he sit down and he moment and he stand up, then he's gone the realization, you know. That is the number one. In number one, he's a number one. And number one, number two, is Guru Rinpoche, Mahan Guru Padma Sambhava. He got uh, pointing out from his guru, Shri Singha, then suddenly few words, lines, and he, he got. Then uh, the last one is in Tibet. His name is Chizun uh, Singhi Wangshu, who achieved rainbow body. Um, completely collapsing his body, he's actually floating up in the sky, and actually whole body turned into rainbow, he start disappearing, and he actually singing song, realization songs when he's actually disappearing and floating. His name is Chizun Singe Wang Chu. So he's the 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 one of the most uh, um, known uh, Dzogchen master in Tibet. So he is the the, <coughs> the best best student. He is that number third. Is Chapter Drugo Jinrinpoche uh, usually say these things. So what Chapter Drugo Jinrinpoche did is his realization song of Jizun Singe Wangchu is actually added in the end. So all the students, when they finish meditation, you actually read the last uh, mm, 
realization uh, song, introducing song of the genuine practice of the Jesus Singer Wang Chu, all the student read. So, um, so that I thought is very important, not for you actually, but you all put it sure our Dharma sister said, going to check like a gold, so better you check like a gold. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, for me, I'm going to chant this for myself. <laughs> yeah. And so myself, just to get the blessings and calm my mind and become more uh, sincere and humble and uh, all that. So first begin with the different refuge, okay? Sanje Jodan Soji Shonam Lai Chanjo Pardo Dane Jab Soji Dagi Jin Soji Bes Drolam Benjir Sanji Drobarai Shoi Namo Regun Chabdai Lama Jing Udrobin Jungni Yidam La Parche Kunse Kandro Tawai Sunlai Jabso Inche Namo Ngo Dombai Chuji Guranshan Sawa Longjo Zo Tuji Naso Drugo Chanjo Bardo Jabso Inche Until here is the refuge. Then is about the Chitta. O in Kanya Mandrova, Maluba, Sanje, Sala, and Gubi, Jiren Zoba, and Chimbu Menga, Ranri, Jogu, Dobara, and Ja. Then, uh, supplication to Guru. Pardon, Zabi, Lama, Rimbo, Je, Dagi, Jevo, Bime, Den, Gadin, Chimbu, Guni, Jizon, De, Guzon, To, Jeng, Rosa, Do, So, Alaman, Jeno, Alaman, Jeno, Alaman, Jeno, Alaman, Jeno, Alaman, Alaman, Jeno, 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 Alaman, Alaman Jeno, Alaman Jeno, Alaman Jeno, Alaman Jeno, Alaman Jeno, Alaman Jeno. Now receiving for empowerment. Pardon Lame, Guye, Neje, Nevazer, and Jongwa, Dage, Neje, Kuzon, Togdan, Yeje, Doje, Yeje, Lamne, Wangjen, Tobarai, Jura. Now, Guru dissolving to my nature of my mind. Pardon, Zavi, La Mine, Ye, Jeba, and Jember, Ranglat, Ranyan, Gunji, Maju, Bengang, Lai, Yen, Zimba, Namdai, Drudder, Chuji, Go, Chuji, Gola, Nyes, O, Me.
Okay. So the first question. Mm, this question uh, is a teaching uh, of Menzushiri uh, through the five most important teacher of Sajjabha tradition. In Sajjabha tradition, there are five great masters. Uh, one of them, one of them, his name is Thakpa Jalsen. And he's doing practice, retreat. Then uh, one day, uh, Menzushiri Bodhisattva, um, he has a vision, uh, how you say, encounter or vision. Uh, he saw Menzushiri appear in front of him. So Thakpa Jamsen, Master Rinpoche asked, uh, request, please uh, give us, you know, give me uh, what is the essence of uh, Mahayana's teaching. Then mm, Menzushiri said four lines. The first line is, is actually this. When you have attachment to this lifetime, this life, you are not practitioner. And the second, he said, when you have attachment to samsara, you do not have renunciation. Third, he says, when you have attachment to your self mm, benefits, you do not have bodhicitta. And the fourth, he says, when the uh, clinging or the grasping arise, you do not have correct view. So this is the four line, as we call departing from the four attachments basically. So this uh, particular line is, uh, I, I like to say two things. First, uh, about character. Uh, this actually means having good character. Uh, good character meaning basic, good character meaning uh, humble and uh, content. Humble and content is actually the basic quality of Theravada teachings. In a, you know, not just Mahayana or Vajrayana, just basic Buddha. In the beginning teachings, Buddha said, to really practice meditation correctly, you need to have a correct character. The mental state of that, the state of mental must be content and humble. The content and humble is the base. Huh? So you build in meditation. <coughs> so when you are humble and content, you actually achieving this. Uh, whatever this mentioning here, is already you are answering that. So what this really means, not attachment means having content, and humble. You are already achieving the first line. Now the second part that I like to share is when you are little bit more advanced practitioner, saying that you doing bodhicitta, then doing meditation, then doing a little bit advanced, you know, like 10, 15 years, really, you know, seriously you're doing it. And this uh, particular line means uh, not attaching to this lifetime, meaning uh, really concerned. Really concerned means this, uh, we are very nice right now when we don't have no money. But when we have money, uh, the true color of us is shown after. Likewise, when you have no power on other people, uh, you are, we are all kind of nice. But when we have power, then you, should, you show the color. When uh, people uh, do not respect you, it's okay. You can be humble. But when people show respect to you, then you, sh you show your true color. Uh, when you are not famous, you are okay. We are humble, we are nice, you know. But when you are very famous, then we show true color. This is called full worldly consent or full, full worldly desire. Okay? So what this particular mention is actually, uh, you need to watch out the full worldly desire that 
when you are practicing dharma, this fourly, four worldly desire is must watch out. So that is actually referring. Okay? All right. Then second question. Second question. If we have already received some Dzogchen mind training no, instruction. No, no. Second teaching is Rinpoche. Why we are we so afraid of death? Why are we so afraid of death? <laughs> and oh, also... Oh, I think, sorry. My, my one is this one. Your one is a little different. Oh. Okay, sorry. <coughs> uh, Rinpoche, why are we so afraid of death? <laughs> <laughs> also, why do we fear losing our loved ones? How can we contemplate on death? This one, I think, goes along really beautifully with the uh, uh, parting from the four attachment. The f second one is really beautiful, goes along r perfectly here. When you have attachment to the samsara, you do not have renunciation. It's really beautifully goes here. So I just want to share two th few things here. Um, for normal people, for genuine normal people, not into dharma, not into, you know, kind of thing. There are many things very vague, what, you know, not in the Dharma, what does that mean? Eh? It's, we have no idea what does it really mean. People carrying mala, you know, we are not so clear about that. So I'll we'll talk about later, but just for now. It's for now that I imagine that you know, okay? Normal people who are not in practice, death and people love dying is not nice. It's really uh, uh, negative. Yeah. When people into practice, uh, Buddha, teaching of the Buddha in Mahanguru Padma Sambhava, then you reach certain places that actually death and reminding yourself of death or your loved one is a really good wake up, um, like a wake up call. You know, to remind yourself to actually uh, practice correctly. Because uh, we know how to fool ourselves. Um, Mela Reba said, My practice is, I love this sentence, yes, yeah. my practice is stay in the mountain, do the practice of instruction of my guru. Until that I have no desire of hope or fear, then not to fool myself. Something like that, the last part. Meaning that many of us, we think we're practicing Dharma. But we, should, we need to make sure that we're not fooling ourselves. You know? So I think majority we are actually fooling ourselves. Honestly speaking, you know, feels good about doing something. That feels good of doing something is actually some part is actually sort of deceiving, yeah? fooling meaning deceiving yourself. Yeah? So now for this truly answer to give you, I like to say one thing. Um, I like to talk about three samsaras. Okay, uh, first samsara is external. Okay, now this. Oh. Uh, Rinpoche, I'm very difficult. I you know, cannot sleep. I'm, Chetra is not so good for me. People are really bad on me. I'm not happy, Rinpoche. First, I'm very happy, but now teacher is okay, but people are not good, you know, and I cannot find good friends, and I don't see the future, what I'm going to do. Hmm? So, what happened is, the world, the external world that you see, and you, you see in one. You don't see separate, you see actually one. So, anything changes externally, because you have no control. I cannot control your mind and your mood. So, whatever changes, you start changing along. So for that, 
what you need to do is observing. Huh? Every people like to meditate. Sometimes, honestly, just sitting meditation is okay, but learn to observe. Sit and observe. Oh, yesterday I'm a little bit not happy. And my mind is a little bit not happy. The instantly, the env environment is not good. When your mind is a little bit happy, environment is okay. So now you start seeing separation of external world in your mind. You and inter no? you, me and my world is separate. Now I see the world is not influencing me. Actually, I am influencing the world. When you start observing, uh, are you with me? So you only do this through observing. Oh yeah. When I my mind is mood and things it changes, you know the world start changing. Now you start realizing this. You are observing this. Then what happened? Instantly you become separate. The external world and you becomes now separate. When the moment the separate begins, what happens? You start seeing the samsara, the first samsara layer is external. Okay, so many of us we don't do that. What we do, we just we keep doing, keep doing, but we don't observe, observe things, huh? observe, check, observe, we keep doing, doing Quran, doing things, you know. We, we sometimes go to just observe a little bit, observe. Oh, my mind changed. Ah, I'm angry. Then look around. Everybody's look nasty. Really does. When you feel uh, not happy, everything looks bad. Sometimes guru looks bad, but then you say, "Oh no, no, no! Guru should be good. Guru's good." <laughs> You know, <laughs> like that. I'm not kidding to you. It happens. So that shows very clear the external world and you is actually one now, right now. It's like this. But when you start observing, then through this openness ha happens, then you start seeing separation. This is the first step. Now the second step. Now you start observing. Then you say, oh, I'm not happy. I'm happy, Right? Unhappy, not happy. Now you check. Who is this unhappy, not happy? Me? Where is this me? It's just, just question. It's just asking. Oh, you're funny. Me? I'm not suffering, suffering, suffering. No problem. I'm suffering. Oh, it's problem. Anger, anger, anger. No problem. I am anger. It's problem. School, school. You know, school somebody. Oh, it's okay. But school me. So now the me is where. My body, my name, where is this really me? You observe. Now you start seeing you don't have no, you don't have no finger to point. Okay, you don't find anywhere to point this me, but you know it's, you, call, you say me, me. But where? You need to find out where to point. Now you don't able to point out. Then it, one day, not right away, slowly by slowly, what happened is you start awakening up. It's funny. I don't find me, but I believe in me. And that begin that doubt helps you to separate the internal inner samsara is non existent really and give us the pain is, is me. So actually Buddha is so Buddha is so nice, you know. So humble, so nice. In that time, you know, such a really beautiful person and saying that everybody, please check my teachings. But on the way, you listen carefully the teachings. What happened is you need to observe your own, you know. It takes time. It's not easy to write away. I call inner samsara. Then... Right now in your mind you have ting 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 aware and inaware not aware where aware and inaware of thoughts countless coming okay but one thing is amazing one single thought any thought like say boda coffee okay katmandu hamburger you know just whatever thought just say sheta you know one single thought does not uh, does not last for two seconds. 
by self. Many of you know, you don't know what I'm saying right now. Some of you know. Many of you are saying, oh, wow, what is that? Putty show is uh, impermanence, right? So you go right away in the book. Shetta book, you know, Abhidharma books. That is the beginning of problem. <laughs> because books are good. But the question is you and me. So that's why external world and internal world, you need to see separation. And internal world, the ego, is like this. Then you start looking, you don't find, it goes like this. Then the secret world is ting, thought. Ting, 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 ting. So that is secret world. So you have three worlds. Okay? So the, when the somebody is Rinpoche, afraid of death, because of the outer world and inner world is bind by ego. So that's why you're afraid. I'm afraid too. When I think about death, oh wow, you know, feel pain. Because we have habit of me and death. So that's why it's really good to us uh, to check, observe. Uh, so this is the second one. It's not 100% good answer, but I just give you sort of uh, this answer. Second, how can our personal spiritual Third question, uh, how can our personal spiritual practice help other beings get rid of their suffering? I think it's a very beautiful um, question. But sometimes, for me, I think it's sometimes irrelevant. Because I think when you practice Dharma, so, okay, what is practice Dharma? First, good character. Second, good uh, motivation. Good character with good motivation. Then only good meditation. After good motivation, then good meditation, good dharma, applying, practice, you know, all the things, whatever you receive. Okay? So that is called practice. Okay? So dharma practice meaning build up your good character. Okay? So I'm going to mention later the characters, but not now. So when you start transforming yourself, you start making yourself a little bit better person, a little bit better thinking, and your habit little change, then that is the beginning that your prayer, your uh, speech can genuinely can help others. The m when you do not not sure that you are actually improved or not, or you really can helping yourself or not, truly transform, you start thinking that, oh, Rinpoche, how I can a personal spiritual practice help other being, you know, rid of their problems. First of all, the question is, do you rip, rid of your own problems first? You know, transform your issues a little bit. So you, my question is, you really make yourself happy? Just simple through simple practice, then that simple practice can make other people happy. You can rip off, rid off your own karmic issues. That practice can help other people karmic issue resolve. You can reduce your anger, means you can help other people reduce anger. Means you can actually rid off your ego clinging or reduce, you can help other people reduce ego clinging, okay. Right? The question is relevant through observing yourself and transforming yourself. Okay? So that's why observing, you know, not checking very, you know, seriously, not like that. Just very gently observing, you know, just, you know, drink tea, you know. Yesterday, you know, somebody scold me, feel very pain, still I have pain. Why? Because I'm holding on. He only scold me once, right? But I'm reminding myself until now, right? So, oh, I'm holding on. So you need to observe and see that actually I'm holding on. 
So this kind of things is very important, very crucial. That's why many students are not finding Dharma effective, some people say, because you're not learning to observe, to actually see the effectiveness. Uh, it's very important to observe and see how actually, actually really transforming. Uh, so that's why it's very, very important to, I think it's very, very important to observe and see your changes. Whatever level changes you have, you can able, should able to change others. Uh, you cannot help yourself, means you can pray for others, no problem. But how much you can help, very, very doubtful. But, you know, you can pray. There's nothing wrong with pray. Hmm? Okay. Dear Rinpoche, in New Year, you point out the faults of students. On New Year's Day, you pointed out the faults of students from different cultures. Uh, Western students are self-centered and don't put in the effort to accumulate auspicious conditions, just, um, such as making offerings or helping the poor. Chinese students do accumulate auspicious conditions, but they are too much into energy, auspicious signs, etc. Nuari students don't ask enough questions, whereas Western students ask too many unnecessary questions. <laughs> Could you please expand on what the problem is with each of these faults and how they should be balanced? Thank you very much. Mm. Actually, uh, that day, <coughs> the New Year day, when I just, you know, sharing things, um, how to say, after I'm sharing, I start thought, oh, I should not share, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because really, you know, I just say things that what I saw in my experience of 15 years of teaching different people. But, the, but then I thought, oh, it can be hurtful, you know, when people can listen and it can be hurtful. And actually, almost is a not a problem from the thing, but I see the culture where they come from brings their own patterns. But actually, I have the everything myself. The beginning, I did not believe in accumulating things. Um, then I started liking the sign, you know, the sign, the feelings, the whatever thing, you know, buzz, you know, of the pre spiritual practice, you know, like normally. They. Then sometimes I'm afraid to ask questions to my guru, how never a student are. But sometimes I ask so many nonsense story, uh, questions to my guru. Right? So, the meaning is, when you learn to practice, you need to learn correctly, how to practice correctly. Right? Many people, what they do is, they go to the teacher, and they say, Rinpoche, I'm doing honro, or doing meditation. And then some teacher says, okay, do this, do this, and do prostration, uh, or do this, focus your breath, and whatever, focus metta, karuna, you know, visualization, mantra, and the students keep doing. But, that does not change that your capability to truly understand Dharma, you're not able to change. Because now you don't have nobody telling you, nobody telling you what kind of a, a correct a quality of a being practitioner, the correct practitioner. Because nobody telling you that. Okay? You, what you're just learning is a uh, university thing, you know? Just go and do, you know? And just do. But the truly way is how to do the best, right? And best meaning not for best for you, for me, and for you, for you, for me, for me, it's different. I've come from different, you come from different, so we're a different thing. So, Generally, what I saw is, you need to ask a question that is really, really, um, you, you get the point, understand the really good point, and you really practice, then you ask the question on that practice. But many students, they don't tell the question point, the, the key points. What they do, they tell stories. 
I work up morning and I do refuge and I do buddhicitta, you know, and the whole stories, you know. It's waste of your time and a waste of Guru's time. Meaning, it's not actually a waste of time. The meaning is you don't actually get the point. Okay, that's one. Number two, you're not able to make uh, accumulation. Why? <coughs> Look at the stories. Buddha Shakyamuni tells so many stories in sutras. How many times he said that one time I was this Bodhisattva, uh, did how many Buddhas offering this and flowers and that, and you know, you, you have so many stories, isn't it? You able to do that? Me able to do that? Every day? No. What we are doing, we're doing not what Buddha is actually showing to us. What we're doing, we're doing a little modern style. We take a book, find a teacher, open the book, and try to understand. What Buddha did, he's actually doing. He's doing prostration, he's putting the flowers, he's offering, he's putting incense, he's making aspiration, may I realize, and he's getting the teachings, and he's putting effort. He's doing the whole package. And what we're doing, we look at the, uh, watch life story movie, you know, just li we just watch a movie, <laughs> and we go back, and say, oh, I love Buddha story, and I know it. But that is not the point. You need to get the experience. And that, they normally the modern students, the Western students, and the Asian students who went to Western stu studies, and they and they're very critical mind. And they say, oh, you know, this accumulation merit, you know, accumulation is all religious beliefs, you know, and it's not important, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I guarantee you, your spiritual meditation practice is not not so juicy, not so fruitful. Imagine you wake up in the morning and you don't, how you say, wash your face and don't put any cream. How beautiful face you're going to be. Check. Dry after you, huh? not so clean, not so radiant, right? After you wash, you put a little bit oil, right? And you put hair, you're shining, right? So not accumulating uh, gr great c conditions, it's like I woke up in the morning and not washing, not putting oil. Honestly. Because I did give this example, it's not a good example, but I just did this because I see many young ladies and young men here. So, really, really, my guru tell me the story is meditation is having good expensive car. Accumulate, uh, gather, I'd like, I don't like to say accumulate merit. I prefer to say gathering the auspicious conditions for your realization. Gathering the auspicious conditions is having a very beautiful, good road. You have an expensive car, but you have a bad road. It's very grumpy. Right? But you have very good road, but you don't have no car. I mean, no, don't meditate. So no use. So you meditate with good car, meaning good road with a good car, is perfect. <coughs> so this is what, what my guru told me. And it really makes sense. And I understood instantly how important of gathering auspicious conditions. Now the question is, what is gathering auspicious conditions? Offering flowers, waters, uh, generosities, um, you know, mandala offerings, sung offerings, offering monies and charities and up and down, everything is important. It's very, very crucial. And many of Western students do charity. But when they come to offering to Buddha, they don't much. That is the Western and Western students. And Chinese, they do a lot of offerings, but they have a lot of desires. They have a lot of wish with that. You know, so wish to have is okay, but you need to direct the wish for the realization. You need to direct that, uh, make aspiration for realization, true genuine practice. Then you need to direct that. The direction how to send is aspiration, dedication, 
and make the aspiration to the, the direct the result to, for your realization. So I'm not going to say it's a Western problem, Chinese problem, every problem. I see this, everybody have their problem. You know, problem means they have these characters. And I see this myself too. But why I say this? Because I see more tendencies from there. You know, Nevada students, majority Nepali Nevada students, they hardly ask questions. You know? And majority Chinese, uh, uh, you know, they always saying something about, uh, you, know, you know, this um, flow of energies and, uh, you know, like um, science, you know, like Tibetan have so issue problem. All that Tibetan students have problems. But we need to rip up. I rip up off. I each, each time I rip up. Before I'm lack of accumulating auspicious, I, now I, I, I don't have the problem. Before I ask nonsense questions, now I don't. Ask the nonsense question. When you don't ask non non nonsense questions, meaning your mind is already becoming to find the key. Okay? Yeah. Third, I don't wait for the results. I don't wait for the you know super nature powers or energies and all. Of course, my desires start coming. Oh, I, I wish, you know, this and that, and that's normal. So then you sort of calm down yourself, you know. Oh, don't go into that path. Genuine, direct for your realization, not for any other stuff. So like that, it takes time to do it. So you check yourself when I share, you know, pretty sure you can relate what I'm saying. You, you know, you so, sort of you relate that. Oh, yeah, um, yes, I make sense. Um, yeah, I do this, you know. It's like that. It's normal. So that's why you need to learn yeah, to uh, improve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's uh, receiving many different empowerments important is said that recognizing something something or you can ask whatever you have there During the empowerments that you kindly gave recently, uh, you spoke many times in Tibetan about the four obscurations at the head, throat, heart, and lower part of the body. There are the These are the areas in our body where we visualize seeking empowerments. I was hoping you could say something about this kind of physical aspect of purifying our body, speech, mind, and habitual tendencies. Is that kind of happening with, uh, does that happen with everything we do? Uh, for example, when making offerings or reciting mantras, doing concise daily practice, or the Buddha, of the Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, or doing kora around the stupa and so forth. So basically, the question says, um, the question have two questions, right? Um, uh, Rinpoche, when you're giving teachings, you talk about four obscurations, and um, uh, then uh, how to purify that is every practice does purify that or not, something like that, right? Hmm. Um, it, it, it does you know, reduce. Uh, Every practice reduces this for obscurations. It does. But actually, not really. The specific target of each obscuration has teachings and instructions. It's not just randomly just do things. In, it's not like that. Now, mm, I'm not going to say too much about this for now. But uh, just to let you understand a little bit, in the Tibetan called Lidrip, Nyundrip, Shidrip, Pakchak Dripa. So, first obscuration called obscuration of character. I prefer to say character, not karma. Meaning that uh, what does it mean is. Uh, 
first you have no interest to practice yeah, you know you don't have no interest to practice that is the first character of ob- obscuration do the interest is not there now you come to nepal go to temple do some lambing you know not believe anything just lamb you know don't no, just go kora then you go to class you start hearing something is oh manu be me hong you know just chanting but all this random act sort of smooth down little bit of your character karmic character obscurations you know obstacles come down now the interest is slowly coming oh i think i should go to rangju ishi institute to study at least a week or two you know to get understand what is buddhist means something like that so that means your karmic obscuration now going down the interest is coming up the first now the second is you go into dharma now majority you like that half of you like that you in the dharma you receive in teachings right but you don't get the point what is buddhi jita you know uh, buddhi jita is all sentient being free from suffering you know you just repeat the things whatever the book says but really to to get the point you don't get the points half of student they don't get point now that is obscuration of character does what they do is completely blocks you to not to get point that's why the four foundation hondo practice is important you keep doing the four foundation you know how does work first you don't know you keep doing keep doing keep doing then suddenly you start getting you getting points oh it's like that oh it's like that you know like that you start start getting the po- key points that means you now getting away from the first obscuration getting less now you start practicing a little bit now you start improving now you start seeing your negative emotions you know anger jealousy whatever all that then you start slowly transforming after 5 10 years you start transforming a little bit you think you little bit improve now what happens you start having pride spiritual pride dharma pride oh i think i'm i think i can be guru now because <laughs> I mean proof. I think I saw nature of mine. Definitely I saw. Really I'm not kidding to you. That the negative emotions now taking over from the spiritual path st- start going into you. But you don't see that it's coming in. It's like sneak in from the back door. Then it sort of hijacked your spiritual path. That is called obscuration of negative thoughts and emotions. The second part. The practitioners this obscuration attacks when you are getting improved and how they go in back doors mm. so that time you really need to have accumulation gathering auspicious condition making sure the aspiration bodhicitta motivation direct to the realization you f- lucky enough you have good really genuine guru can give you some instruction like that then you can cross over that and you really diligent to practice then you cross over this you become more humble more genuine more content okay so now you start meditating every day you know shamata vipassana you start meditating but whatever you do you have object subject me all sentient being pure for me sentient being object subject mantra object subject shamata object subject everything you do is object subject you have nothing practice that you go beyond object subject only emptiness meditation that is called object subject meaning is the obscuration of cognitive and i don't like to say cognitive i like to say obscuration of having object and subject i prefer to say that cognitive i, I for me doesn't ring any bells sometimes the word we use is really terrible i think make doesn't make sense at all that's why many practitioners is little bit of vague understanding everything vague no clear yeah? so that uh, third obscuration is not my problem is uh, your guru's problem whoever you have guru say your guru's problem and it's your problem so don't tell me what is the solution i'm not going to tell you that 
Okay. Now the fourth obscuration is the that we say cognitive uh, habitual tendencies, but actually basically meaning the first thought. Ting. Right now. Ting, 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 ting. Right now, it's going on in your head, your mind. Boom, 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 You have no clue. Everything begins there. Pa. 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 Feeling lost. Ting, 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 ting. Nobody asks the question. You, what are you doing? Always reading, study, praying, book, read different, different religion book, whatever book, philosophy book, what this book, this book, Greek book, you know, Greek thinker book, this book, you know, ancient book, Chinese great ancient book, all this book, great book, you all start reading. You have no clue what is going on in your head. You don't know how to overcome first thought. That's it. Finish. Really? Gone. Now that, don't ask me the question again. Because these things, you need to have guru. You need to have correct guru. guru. Not like nowadays, you know, you go see guru, oh, Rinpoche, you can be my guru. And, you know, yeah, it's so easy, you know. You think you can choose guru? Don't forget. Guru choose you too. But many students now, they think so. I can choose guru. It's a democratic system. Goes both way. <laughs> no kidding. Many things think that you think the student have a more authority than teacher. No. Who have the knowledge? Who have the instruction? So both way. When you get marriage, husband, wife, both way, right? It's not like only wife way or husband way, right? Or husband, husband, or wife, wife, right? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's both way. Actually like that. Okay? So, third obscuration, the fourth obscuration, please, you have a guru, ask your guru. But I, my job is explaining to you shortly what this means. Object, subject, in the first thought. What meditation, what practice go beyond this? That's why this four observation make me to follow Dharma and follower of Mahanguru Padma Sambhava, his instruction and my precious gurus because of these four, aspir- uh, four obstacles yeah? to observing. So I want you to observe first character. Don't jump into the last one. Because many people like that. Oh, I don't know the first one. I want to know this. Nah, nah. Don't go to that. First, character. Second, emotion. Then comes after. You know? So like that. So I think I answered this one already. Our eye is a place where many students and teachers try to combine study and practice. What is the best way to combine study and practice? Can you tell us what being a scholar practitioner means? Very good question. I think I answered kind of bit bit on before. Uh, for me, really practice is uh, from the beginning to uh, observing, checking, observing, checking. When you really think, oh, my mind is very important to transform. I can see my mind is how impact of how I see the world and how the world sees me. You really, really, truly, you understand this. Then you are beginning the first step of practitioner. Practitioner meaning transforming your mind is the, trans- is the practitioner. Practitioner mean not meaning just chanting only mantra, just, you know, mantra chanting, something, something, sitting down, meditation. It's not a just practitioner. Practitioner meaning the transforming the mind. Okay, so this is what how I see. So to do that, you need to do uh, observing yourself a little bit. So now the question is, how mo- how long I should observe? They have no limit of time. Do observe, you know, whenever you need, you know, just five, five, ten minutes, whatever. That is many modern stu- students ask the question: How many hours I should meditate? How many numbers I should sit? 
Honestly, I never asked this question to my gurus. My guru says, do it. I say, okay, I just do. And I see how I, how, you know, I, I do exactly what I needed. But they have, sometimes they have recommend how many hours like that. Then I just follow that recommend. Normally, I don't ask uh, these too many questions. So just check, observing yourself, very thing. Now, some people say, Rinpoche, I'm afraid to observe myself. I don't know what negative going to come out. There are nothing negative to come out, honestly speaking. Nothing. You know what you did, did bad, and you know what you did good. So what is you need to hide from yourself? There's nothing to hide. Just be brave. You know, just observe. It says, yeah, okay, all fine. You know, I can change. Why? Our nature is pure. And I know many people don't believe in now new age student, uh, scholar um, sort of saying that nature is pure is wrong, you know. Uh, human nature is bad and good and improvement, all this. Honestly, I don't really agree with this at all. Okay? I'm sorry. The person have a right to say things and I have my right to say my things. So my right is I don't agree. Why? That gives you very big, big black hole. Bottom line, that gives you black hole. Okay? What of black hole? Black of black hole of not ultimate progress. That's it. Period. When your nature is good, what happens? You have somewhere to stand on, somewhere to hold on. Like I invest some business, I have one million dollar in my bank. So I hold on that one million dollar. You know, I have not much money right now outside, but in the bank I have. So I can choose where to invest. But I have nothing. Where to hold on? You know? So these new scholars, they start saying these kind of things. I, I heard a few people saying these are really famous scholars. No, it's not good. Not good enough. Next time you're going to see. You start meditating, you start seeing the four obscurations, especially the number four. You know what are we talking about. Until that you think is belief. Fine. Whatever you believe is fine. But you start really to following correctly, not crazily, for, uh, correctly, correctly, not crazily, you know what actually we're saying. Yeah, the nature is absolutely perfect. All of us. So, observing your mind, just your random mind in the past you know, few years, what you've done wrong, don't be sad. You've done good too. You've done bad. So don't start counting how many good and bad, no. Just observe and learn to transform. Uh, don't go in too much, okay? This is what I want to say. Okay, then eh? Sometimes we think too much about the person and it is hard to focus on studies or practice. What can we do in such cases to be able to focus on something else? Mm, I, I did not understand the question. Sometimes we think too much about a person and it is hard to focus on studies or practice. What can we do in these cases to be able to focus on something else? Mm. Physically, go Kora. <laughs> Every day, at least one hour. That time, not looking around, you know, talking to everybody. You believer, carry mala. No believer, just walk. Quietly walk for one hour. Go back, do some breathing exercise. <laughs> yoga breathing for a few ten minutes. Five, five, ten minutes yoga breathing. Then after that, do ten, fifteen minutes, a little bit mental, mental focus. You know, anapanasate, something like that. That is going to bring you down. Focus to whatever you need to focus. Very simple. Then still not working, go to check Tibetan doctors, check your nerves, get, no, I'm no kidding, check some, take some medicine. Then really make sure that why are you here today? What is the purpose of that? Not for look for your person, you're here. You're here for study, reflect, transform, and become a good person. You have a purpose, you have a purpose here. So fulfill the purpose. Uh, in a good man or beautiful ladies, whatever, girls, uh, just go kora. 
Don't think about it anything. Just walk kora. You think you're going to fall. Yeah? So this is how I do. Oh. Yep. Hi, Ramachi. In my daily practice of nature of mind, I find it easier to settle loop and feel calm. However, uh, what, what? Uh, in my daily practice of nature of mind, I find it easier to settle the loom and feel calm. Mm. However, it is much harder to have the mind looking at itself without any blind spot. There is often mm. a sense of the subject that is partly blind to itself. So it is not transparent mm. and luminous. Do you have any <laughs> suggestions? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yingji. <laughs> Really, really, I agree. S subtle the win is very, very effective. I agree hundred percent. Whoever is asking question, but the second question is the question you should ask to your guru. Is not to me, and not for your stupid dharma brothers and sisters. They don't know themselves what they're talking, and don't ask. It's good to damage. Now that is a one of the character and problem that I see students. Like me, I don't talk about my meditation to anybody, everybody. No. Big cross. Only I see my guru, I share a little bit, I get the instruction, I go back, I sit. And I have few students, they are Tibetans. They are asking almost everybody the same questions. You understand? It's a Tibetan. Lamas, monks, nuns, everybody starts giving different different instructions. Then she comes back, my student comes back to me and asking about all the confusions. Alright? Then you know what, what is my answer? My answer is no answer. Because I ask I need to remind her, you think I am your teacher? Then put me in your teacher state. Then you don't think I'm not teacher? Then you just ask whatever you want to anybody. I don't care. But you say I'm my your teacher. Stick the instruction, follow. You get the result, what I'm telling you. It's not like I'm controlling, okay? You check yourself. Now if philosophical, you ask every question, no problem. But when it comes to meditation like this, you start asking everybody. Then is they give you different instructions and they're gonna clash each other. Okay? You don't know until you don't practice. So right now you say, oh, okay, well, uh, okay I'm not practicing. I, I think I understand and you know, something like that, some of you. It's okay. But this particular question, your question should ask your guru. Thank you. If we have already received some Dzogchen mind training instructions from one Lama, is it okay for us to seek instructions from another another lama as well, or is it better if we stick to one teacher? <laughs> okay, now may I can tell a little bit of my story. My first um, Dzogchen master is my grandfather, Japje Trugu Jenobuche. I follow him when I was 16 years old. I'm in Dzogchen teaching. Of course, I'm following from him under when I'm seven, you know, eight, nine, ten. I'm you not know, following him, but instruction when I was 16. After he passing, then uh, three years later, I was 19 years old. I follow Nishu In that, between these three years, I did not follow anybody. In, in, in I'm talking about Dzogchen instruction. I only follow Yushu Kenron Bushi's instruction. That's it. Then, my age 21, my Yushu Kenron Bushi passed away. He passed. So I did not have Dzogchen instructor for over, over 10 years. And I did not, when everybody asking Dzogchen, yes, I received many empowerments, different lamas, but instruction of Dzogchen, no. Then I meet my guru uh, when I'm 32. Uh -huh. And I follow him until 10 years. Just him, his instructions. 
and he just passed ten, two, three, six, uh, four months ago. He just passed, right? So you know now how I do. So when I got an instruction from one lama, may I can receive instruction other lama. Normal teachings, no problem. Dzogchen instruction, I think is a problem. Because you, your meditation is Dzogchen practice is the main, then it's a problem. Why? Now you start going to st start switching. Then you, <laughs> and the Lama did not see the progress of you. Whenever they're asking questions, you know, having dialogue, they cannot know, they don't know what are you doing. Like, like my, uh, my guru, when I follow his instruction, after th three years later, he starts saying, oh, you're doing perfect, just do. After five years, just do, go on, go on, go on. Seven years, go on, go on, go on, like that. So he knows exactly I'm going there, what right path. So Dzogchen teaching is not like you do and he follow, no. The guru's job is a very big deal there. Because you have no clue what you're doing, basically. Right? So the, the guru really needs to be hands-on, like a lifeguard, you know. It's very, very important. So, uh, yeah, this is my thoughts. Now you need to listen to my thoughts or not. Really, it's completely it's your choice. But it's me, I'm not going to go any other places. Just stick with one. It's easier. I'm doing the Chuchu Parti and Gun Sen Gun but do not feel much connection or devotion to Guru Rinpoche. Should I consider doing Gun with another deity I feel a connection with, or mm. should I continue with this Gun anyway? Ningje mm. again. <laughs> you don't know the person, you do not know who is Guru Rinpoche. You see, Guru Rinpoche is a one part of the deity. No. Guru Rinpoche, I give you an example. In our lineage, Choling Dersar, we have 40 volumes. Okay? We have eight different deities, Vajasattvas, Lokishwaras, uh, you, we have variety deities, Tara, whatever. Everything taught by Mahanguru Padma Sambhava. So now, you don't feel connection to Mahaguru, and you think you you think you could succeed some deities thing. You choosing wrong path. I'm guarantee you. You need to choose only one is Mahaguru. Then from the Guru, then you expand out. Like this, how I do. I Mahaguru, then I expand out to the different deities. Now what you're doing is you're releasing the main and you try to choose something else. That is not the real Vajrayana path. The Vajrayana path, the main source is Guru. From the Guru, everything expanded. So the answer is, you don't feel connection right now, fine. Keep doing it. You're going to feel connection later. This is, everything is like that. I'm like that. A, a many people like that. I, I tell you a story. We have a statue builder. In, the, in Indonesia, Bali, we have a small meditation center. And the statue is a stone, and the builder is a Muslim. And uh, this is, they told me the story after. So after the building finished, and he has some issue with his belly or whatever sickness, in this Muslim artist who built the statues, he had a dream. Guru Rinpoche appeared in his dream. Now it's you know, so strange, right? And Guru Rinpoche said to him, no problem, your disease is going to be cured. Next day he vomit, he shit, you know, he diarrhea, he vomit. He's okay. Now he start telling his everybody friends, oh my goodness, you know, I'm cured. Something like that. I don't think he cured, but definitely improved, right? He, from his experiences. Now, that person who have no connection, meaning like in this lifetime, no empowerment, no transmission, can have connection. And you, landing into Thukdu Parajikunser, from somewhere in the world, there's seven billion people, right? 
you just landing here somewhere somehow and doing this practice somehow and you saying you have no connection feeling <laughs> it's like quite strange you know you understand you have connection that's why you landed here you know you understand so it's like definitely you have connection but you need to keep doing you're going to see the sign later feeling everything comes after okay I guarantee you. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to be reading questions from here because oh. the mic has better coverage over here. Okay. Um, so. Oh, no, Minda. Mm. What are Rimich's suggestions on how one can best connect with the precious, concise daily practice? Gyunki Kueljang. You can repeat again, please. What are Rinpoche's suggestions on how one can best connect with the precious, concise daily practice? I have no idea what does it really mean, connect, best connect. But um, generally practice when you finish Gondro, when you finish Gondro, then many people jump into a little bit more larger practice called Tile Nyingbo. It's like 10 pages. Actually, it's not good to jump that way. You need to jump the small one. It's called single deity, single mudra. They call single deity means the Junji Koljang, the concise daily practice. Two page only, or three page. Stick with that. At least one one point two million mantras of Guru Rinpoche. Finishing. Don't do anything learning before first. Just stick with that. Focus for for life force binding practices. Uh, four life force binding, four nails. Uh, bring up the four nails, make sure the four nails perfectly understood and practiced correctly. 1.2 million mantras. Then from there you start jumping into Tilly Nyingbu. It's going to be very smooth. So I think this is what I want to say for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rinpoche, could you explain the three kayas? Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nirmanakaya, and how a practitioner should understand them. Uh, you don't feel bored? <laughs> I feel a little bored. <laughs> Not bored, I feel bored. <laughs> Okay, this is a very, very good question. Mm. Guru Rinpoche gave a teaching in our Cholin Teresa Revealer, Reveal by Chocho Lingba, called Gradual Path of wisdom essence okay so now just give you a picture anything that teaching that about mind and transforming mind huh? mind transforming mind four immeasurables six parameters bodhicittas you know all that type of teachings renunciation you know karma all that huh? mind base of mind transformation is the teaching of nirmanakaya buddha Okay? We call gradual path. Now, anything teachings is to talk about pure, everything is deity, everything is enlightened, everything is mantra, you know, that type of teachings. We call the teaching of the wisdom appearance, meaning the pure appearance. Okay? The path of pure appearance, wisdom reflection, you know, you can say whatever you, two words, with wisdom appearance or reflection of the uh, uh, wisdom pure path like all the deities yeah practice you know all these things is sambhubakaya's buddha's teachings now the wisdom the nature rigpa and recognize all the kind of stuff and now you talk about dzogchen all this is dharmakaya buddha's teachings so basically the trikaya give three teachings one is the mind transforming the mind one is the expression of the wisdom practice and one is essential wisdom practice. These three 
practices taught by three Buddhas. Means the mind is related with Nirmanakaya, purity, reflection of the wisdom, is related with Sambhavakaya, and the wisdom itself, Rigpa itself, is related with Dharmakaya. So that, that's why the Tirikaya teachings, Tiri, uh, tiri teachings. Now the question is, you should not jump into Dharmakaya right away. You first you do Nirmanakaya teachings perfectly. Nirmanakaya teachings, the really, really what they really build up is character. Builds up good character, good motivation, humble, genuine, compassionate, great, patient person. Then you build up practice the you know nature is enlightened completely. Everything is Buddha completely, that practice. Then you build up recognize directly of nature. So you need to gradually build up. You know, you don't jump into it. Yeah. So that is the what I see, uh, these three things. For Dharmakaya teachings, the really important is devotion. It's a must. Uh, you do Dzogchen, you have no devotion, I'm sorry. It's like, I don't know how to say it, but it's... <laughs> you don't believe me? Check Jingmi Lingpa's instruction. Long Ching Ying Thik is the very famous teaching who re revealed Jingmi Lingpa, Dzogchen master. Jingmi Lingpa practiced Long Chimba for three years and he everything opened up. Okay? Jingmi Lingpa said, when I see my guru as a human being, I don't get blessings from the dog. Okay? So, to build up the devotion and every master says, don't focus supplication. Don't focus, oh Guru, bless me, Allah ma cheno, you know, think of me. Don't focus that, Allah ma cheno, Guru, Allah ma, think of me. Don't go into that. See, Guru is Dharmakaya, the first Buddha who never actually began sentient being enlightened, the first Buddha. See the Guru in, in, uh, in, inseparable with that. That you need to put effort there. Uh, this is what Jingmi Lingba said. So that's why many students are missing points. Everybody like this. Devotion fail. Then when your devotion fail, recognition fail together. Why? Who did who who taught the recognitions? Jingmi Lingba, Dzogchen masters, until my gurus. All the gurus, they practice devotion all the way up. Now what we are doing is, I don't want devotion, but I want recognition. Do you see this is too much? I'm sorry. You understand? I think it's really too much, I think this one. But why too much? For me, fine. But for you, it's not good. That is my thing, what I told you. You learn correctly, you transform correctly, you're going to meet 100 people. And you're going to tell people, yes, I went, I practiced, I transformed. And you keep telling these 100 people. And 100 people, at least some people are going to come to Dharma. Now you practice, you're not transformed. And you say, yeah, I heard this auction thing, is nothing there's nothing there I did for 20 years. You know. <laughs> then you're going to say this to 100 people. And you actually block the opportunity to 100 people. So think. That's why I'm telling observing and transforming is the key. You know? Yeah. Okay. Then. Is there an empowerment for practicing Saraswati as the main deity in Choling Tarsar? Mm, no. But we have practice of Saraswati, four types of Saraswati in Choling Tersa. So, but it's non, not main. But the main is Guru Rinpoche with inseparable with Minzushiri. Then you have four Minzushiri and four Saraswati. Like that. Then you can focus the Saraswati after. You can bring the, focus, you know, bring the Saraswati in the main focus and you focus. You can do that. Yeah. 
Rinpochela, there are several nine-day Drupchen pujas in our monastery, such as the Tsekara Drupchen and the Ngakso Drupchen. Could you kindly explain what the purpose and function of a Drupchen puja is? Mm. So, um, Drupchen actually very good for enhancing the practice. So you do individual uh, retreat, certain certain level. Like for example, I do Honro, I finish Honro, I just constantly practice 1.2 million, I finish my four nails, you know, binding the life force is good, you know, correctly, and I transform a little bit, understood the key points, then I practice Tilen Yingbo every day, I saw offering, do uh, sang offering, Mahakala offering, and I meditate nature of mind, in the compassion, equally practice, so I improve, but still they need enhance, you know, like push, you know, then you join the Ngakso, because Ngakso is half is Tilen Yingbo, and half is hundred deity. So you join Ngaksu Dubchen together nine days and you go to visualization everything, exact the same thing, and hundred deity in the Guru Rinpoche's body. Here is uh, wrathful, here is a peaceful. Then you practice. And through the nuns and monks and yogis and other practitioners, their visualization, their samadhis, their mantras, their accumulations, you know, mantras or whatever, that is combination, you know, it's like combining. And that actually boosts your practice. In nine days, it's going to be enhanced like three years retreat enhancement. So the Drupchen means enhance, actually. Yeah. So Tsekara Drupchen going to start tomorrow is a very enhancing for white Amitayos, where Guru Rinpoche received the instruction in Maratika, the cave of a six hour drive where um, uh, he got instruction. Uh, Guru Rinpoche practiced long life Buddha Amitayus. Then after that, actually, uh, Amitayus appeared and g gave the instruction completely to Guru Rinpoche how to practice. Then Guru Rinpoche received this and Guru Rinpoche went to Tibet. After that, you know, long time this, after this, and Rinpoche, Guru Rinpoche went to Tibet. And Tibet king was very, you know, need to gain longer life. He's having problem. Then Guru Rinpoche gave the empowerment and he prolonged 13 years. This particular white Amitayos, Guru Rinpoche gave and he, Guru, uh, the king, our emperor, lived 13 years more longer. So it's like that. So it's a significant uh, boost for um, life and you know, uh, practitioners, you know, realization like that. Second mm Dupchen. -hmm. So in Choling Tersar, we have over th th 13 Dupchens. Mm. We are only doing two. So my aspiration and my uh, wish in Nepal, we are able to do at least four or five more uh, different type of Dupchen in the future, in a different variety of places. That is my wish. <laughs> so many people say, oh, <laughs> and this. only a few people say, <laughs> and then it shows very clear who's really doing practice and who's not. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> but actually, not joking. <laughs> you understand? Because you don't see the Dubchen importance. That's why you're so... But when you stuck your practice, then you're going to come here to Dubchen. Okay, then. Okay. This question has several parts. So, one... Whenever I want to be more diligent, physical and mental mental obstacles arise. How should I handle this? Physically, go kora. Do breathing exercise. Eat balanced food. Have a good sleep in night. Don't stay too late. Mentally, do compassion practice. Observing your mind a little bit few, five, ten minutes, practice compassion genuinely, and think of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, especially Mahanguru, to you know, bless you, to guide you, your path, <coughs> in not in a stray in other path. That is the answer. Okay, yeah. the second part is, 
um, what is the best way to purify the karma of our family, ancestors, and ourselves? River Sanctu. You want to do some kind of chanting? River Sanctu is the best karmic debt to reduce. Um, then, of course, any practice is very good. But River Sanctu is a very specific. It's like a, you know, it's like a target, you know. It's pointed there. So I prefer River Sanctu. Now, you cannot do yourself. You can pay one monk or nun or yogi. You give the money, say, please do for me. And you can do that too. And I do it. I, d I do this. I, I chant myself and I pay 10 monks and ask them to do for two days. Then I give them offerings. And because I give and I'm a sponsor, so it's dedicated. You know, I get the thing. So you can do that too. So I do both. Hmm? So this is the third part. Since the pandemic, strange thoughts often arise and have a strong impact on my mental health. <coughs> Being physically sensitive, I feel the power of karma strongly. How should I handle these thoughts? <coughs> meditation. Compassion and meditation. Compassion. May all being happiness. May all being free from suffering. May all being happiness. May all being free from suffering. Your mouth is your guru. This moment. Like instructor. Your m thought is a follower. So when you say... May all being happiness, may all being free from suffering. You're going to say that, but your mind starts wandering. So you maintain your awareness, your mind, let follow your, what you say. May all being happiness, may all being free from suffering. May all being happiness, may all be. Now you start slowly, mind start following your word. Then you slowly try to feel it. What does it mean happiness? What does it mean free from suffering? And do it very sincerely. You don't count blessings. Don't count accumulation merit. Don't count resolve. Don't look for enlightenment. Don't look for realization of rigpa. No. Nothing. Zero. Just do genuinely, completely. May all being happiness. May all being free from suffering. May all being happiness. May all being free from suffering. May all being happiness. May all being free from May all being happiness. May all being free from suffering. May all being happiness. May all be. Genuinely, do slowly, 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 slowly. It goes down, 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 and heart. Then heart suddenly opens. When it opens, you sincerely from your bottom, from your heart, you're doing that moment. And that moment, you in the state of the genuine compassion. And that moment, honestly, anxiety not there. Fear not there. Death of fear is not there. That's why just do that is very good. But right away open, I don't know. That's why I say heart is a lock. Mind is a key. But how to open the heart is your mouth. <laughs> don't go. Don't. When you say I love you, right? <laughs> <laughs> really, really, try, try. You see, this is this, this very powerful. May all being happiness. But don't use your hand again. It's not, right? You hug, right? I love you very much, right? Then you give a kiss. <laughs> see, the whole thing, 
is package. Body, speech, and the mind. Isn't it? Exactly the same thing. May all being happiness. May all being Do this, really, do with the hand. Many practitioners, I know, they don't like to do that. You know, older practitioners. Come on, relax. <laughs> <laughs> relax. You don't need to have perfect figure. You want to save your face of perfect figure, that means you are attached to <laughs> you attached to your good look of your dharma practitioner. You are not practitioner. Uh, you understand? This is what I think. Just do with hand. Very nice. Did, did you try? Give yourself five minutes at least. May all being happiness. Don't do fast, okay? May all being free from suffering. May all being happiness. May all being happiness. May all being. Just do genuinely open. Really, really benefit. I like with this practice very much. Okay, then. Okay. Um, regarding the empowerments Rinpoche recently bestowed, are we only allowed to practice or recite these after we have completed the wondro, the preliminary practices? Yes. Yes. Don't worry about go to receive the empowerments because after you finish wondro, you don't need to chase lamas, rinpoches to give empowerment because you already received now. You know? So next time, then you do constantly practice, then Tilen Yingbo, then from there you can branch out. Mm? Okay, now? Um, how can the mandala accumulations in the Ngondro help us realize clarity and the nature of the mind? How to practice correctly? Mm, please say again. <laughs> how can the mandala accumulations mm -hmm. in the Ngondro practice mm -hmm. help us realize clarity and the nature of the mind? Oh my goodness. So much, so much. I offer mandala, okay, now then must do correctly, okay? I seen this day's mandala offering like this. You have mandala, right? You buy something and you have some rice and grains and useless stones and whatever. Then you keep offering the same thing. Wrong. You must have a bag have new things inside. Each time you add in offer, add in offer. Don't offer, re-offer the, the old thing repeatedly. Okay? That is the first wrong thing I see many students do. Second wrong thing I see, they do very fast because they need to chant 100,000. No. Now, watch what they say. I offer all the wealth, I offer my merit, merit, eh? or I offer my realization, my body, my speech, I offer everything. What does it mean of that? That you not actually grasping anything goodness at all. Meaning, how does it help? Okay. When you do the recognition, many students are hunter. Hunter, you know hunter? Hunter? What are you hunting? This beautiful deer called Rigpa. The Rigpa is going to come and you wait. And you're very focused, you try to relax, but you're very tense too. And you're relaxing, but inside, I wish the Rigpa can come now, please. <laughs> Understand? That goodness of desire is the biggest obscuration you have. So how to reduce the desire? Mandala offering. 
Now do it very sincerely from your heart. I offer everything. Why does hatwa? It's letting go of all the negativities. I'm done wrong. I feel bad. You know that wrongdoing, holding. Why does hatwa cleaning? Right? Like how the you know people you see the Ganji rivers people they soak in the body in the water to clean up. Similarly, in the Vajrayana, we soak the Vajrasattva's blessings outside only, no inside. But then my guru said, You should care about it. It's a pit instruction I like to share with you guys. <laughs> huh? I had to practice Vajrasattva. <laughs> Again, one wrongdoing. People chanting wrong. Om Benzar Zado Zamaya Mano Balayam Benzar Zado Denuba Digdan Dindro Mebawa. Okay, wrong one. So do Kayo Mebawa, so bo Chayo Mebawa. That's wrong. So Toyo Mebawa, so Poyo Mebawa is correct. I'm not Sanskrit teacher, but this Trugo Jerumbuchi read like this. So Toyo Mebawa, so Puyo Mebawa. I still, my chanting is not pure in Sanskrit, but to show you can learn from. Uh, Sanskrit teacher perfectly how to chant Sanskrit, but this is but majority they say soto kayo me baba, sobo chayo me baba, like that. It's a little wrong chanting. Now the pit instruction for Bajasatva. No, 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 cleaning, yeah? Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. My guru said, clean. What clean? All negativity, obscuration. It's clean. It's clean. It's like a crystal, completely clean. But many students, they don't do that. And clean. <laughs> Not sure. I hope so. I think so. And some Chinese student and some, you know, what they say, Rinpoche are really clean, you know, but there's something here stuck. <laughs> like this. I asked, um, you know, the Western student, Rinpoche, you know, I try, but you know, it's not in our culture, you know, very difficult to believe these things. It's more like a belief, you know, I joined Dharma, that it's not belief, but after I come in, there's so many chanting and the belief and the rituals, and I'm really confused, like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and Newari people, clean? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what do you understand? Then they're not going to tell me what they understand. That's why the issues I see is this, you see, just a simple of the pin instruction. Like me, I follow my guru instruction. You do this, I say, okay. I go back, I don't feel like that first, but every day, every moment I do, uh, clean, clean. Inside here, you know, says no clean. I said, shut up, clean. Um, no, 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 clean. No, 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 clean. So after you do this, 10,000 times, what builds up? I realize, builds up very strong certainty. Builds up kind of certainty in your heart. Say, done is done in your head. Stops. Many people, educated people, done, uh, yeah, no, who knows, you know? You know, this, this scholar said this, that scholar said, it's not about scholar issue, it's about you, it's me. You know, when you have this certainty, what happens? You gain certainty in your heart. Now that can turn into pride. That's what I said before. But be humble, get certainty. After that, now you have, I done good, you know, I gain some, you know, certainty, I feel good, my negative is pure, right? So you start holding, yes or no? Automatically, right? After Bhajasattva comes what? Mantala offering. What do you offer? I offer my realization, my, yes or no? My realization, my goodness, my accumulation, my teachings, my goodness. Yes or no? What does that show? Let go of everything you're holding. Pointing out, realization, experience. Uh, completely you offer to. Let go sounds very negative. What you do? You offer to the refuge tree. So it sounds very beautiful. Now you look in, you have nothing to hold on. Oh my goodness. I have not bad. I have not good. What happens? Nothing to hold. That is the Vajrasattva and Mandala do. When you have no holding, what happens? You not become a hunter. Understand? You not become a hunter. That's why wherever you come from, whichever culture you come from, I don't care. 
you should not care. What, is, what is the purpose of you coming here? To become a good character, good motivation, humble, genuine person, genuine spiritual practitioner, dharma practitioner, and gaining realization correctly with correct understanding, and having very humble person. That is what you, we want to do. We come from different part of the world, but fine, it's okay. What this, what this part is what we want to do, right? That's why mandala offering is a perfect, and I love mandala offering. And we buy good things. You have the money I'm talking about. Then we you know, buy good things. When it comes to mandala offering, what do you offer? Rice, right? One kilo, hundred twenty rupees, one dollar. Some um, dry nuts, three hundred rupees. $3, you offer altogether $5 worth of things. You drink Java coffee, <laughs> 400 rupees, 350 rupees, one coffee. And you offer what to all the Buddhas? $5. <laughs> now you see how stupid that sounds like. Like me, before I offer rice. Then slowly I add silver. Then I add little gold. Then many students give me one gram, two gram, grow, I add in. Then I many, make many, many silver. I st stock, stock. When comes sudden portion, then I give to goldsmith or silversmith. I make big mandalas. Then I offer to temples. Not, you cannot use for yourself now after you finish the mandala. You cannot use for yourself. So I offer my gurus. I offer to temples. You know, I do this. So I have money. I offer good. I have no money. I don't offer. But you guys, you have money. Still no offer. Now you say, Rinpoche, I have no money. Fine, offer rice. Still you have no money? No, fine. My father, late father said, ah, okay, then you have no money. Go to river, have stone and some clean uh, uh, sand. And you offer, fine. Buddha not asking for you to offer expensive things. But... You have expensive things and you don't want to offer. That is a problem. You don't have it, you don't, not asking for you to offer. Because you need to challenge your desire. That is the key point. Okay? So, I'm sharing with you how to do, what to do, what is the key points, right? Uh, this is like that. Okay? So, how to offer a visualization? You learn from gurus and lamas. But the key points I like to share. Yeah? So next time you do Vajrasattva, every moment. Huh? Okay, then. Okay. How many questions left? <laughs> Three. Good. <coughs> okay, this one is a little bit longer. <coughs> um, <laughs> I have found that in the Buddhist tradition, there is little to no discussion about sexuality. Okay. Please, what does mean sexuality? It's like uh, I'm man, I'm woman, I can choose men, women, that kind of thing. Or sexuality means relationship, physical relationship. More like relationships, oh, okay, probably. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So goes on. This is perhaps because most teachers are monastics, mm -hmm. monks. <laughs> As a lay practitioner, I often find myself in the situation where I relate to my sexuality mm -hmm. as if it were something separate from dharma matters. My question is, how can I integrate sexuality, which is an integral part of our life as lay human beings, mm. into my dharma life, mm. so that my sexuality <coughs> contributes mm. to my spiritual development? Mm. Thank you. Mm. I'm pretty sure you read many third empowerment, all these kind of things. I don't know all that practice. But generally, honestly speaking, have before you have any physical relationship, have some kind of you know, compassion, bodhicitta, practice, you know, few seconds, just a link, few hours before, then I think it's very good. You know, make everything, every loss of life, you know, make it kind of uh, um, blessed by bodhicitta, you know. So I think it's perfectly fine. And don't make so important about it. Yeah. Don't make so important about it, I think. And have a bodhicitta with that. That's good. 
Short answer. Okay. Um, the next question is, is receiving many different empowerments important? In my experience, it's one tradition, like in Choling Tersa, you want to receive all empowerment? I think it's good, because you don't need to chant many, many things. But the problem is when you receive different traditions and they have different requirements. Like me, I received many traditions and I forgot, you know, uh, they, my, one of the gurus coming and uh, putting malas and they're saying something, you know. And I don't know, I was so young, you know, I don't know what to say. And I, I'm just listening what other people say. And they says, one mala, one mala, one mala. I said, okay, one mala, you know. <laughs> then they give me two pages of mantra. I need to chant the whole two pages every day to one mala. I only carry for three days. That's it. I cannot carry for. Then I forgot completely. So that's it. I broke so many like that, you know. <laughs> so I really don't think you should receive so many things. Better check, you know, what requirement first. You know, I prefer that. I think. Yeah. There's a Choling there's a practitioner. Just stick with the one. You receive whole thing and just chant one mantra. It's okay. Mm. That's it. Okay. So here, anybody have question? Now uh, I'm going to have 10 minutes, then we finish. <coughs> please uh, uh, use the mic, please. Mm. Hello, people, uh, people ask your question, uh, say your name. Uh -huh. I'm Aaron, I have a very specific question. I come from Theravada tradition, mostly. And the question is, I got uh, a booklet with Bodhisattva vows. <laughs> and uh, I started looking at it because... Uh, actually, it doesn't matter. The question is very specific. In this booklet, I got the impression that if I take those Bodhisattva vows, uh -huh. I will have to reincarnate in Samsara. Uh -uh. Because it has words which say very specifically yeah, yeah. that this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question is, as to my mind, I discussed this. Uh -uh. Uh, with other Theravada practitioners and uh, honestly how is this compatible with enlightenment at all? How is this compatible with awakening? I asked many people I didn't get the answer. Very I good, very I good. I don't understand. Please. Very, very, very good question. Thank you. Yeah, very good. To achieve Nirvana uh, for Theravada uh, teachings what we you really should realize? To achieve Nirvana in Theravada teachings, what is the m most important to, uh, you can give the mic black, please, uh, to achieve Nirvana, uh, what is uh, need to be mm, realized? Realized, uh, according to my understanding, I should have perfect equanimity. No, no, equanimity, but what is the cause of samsara's, uh, what is the cause of samsara? Uh, Delusion and, and grasping. Grasping. Ego, right? Ego, ego. grasping. Yes. So you, to achieve nirvana, you must uh, go beyond ego clinging, right? Anatta. Yes. Anatta? Anatta, anicca, and dukkha, yes. Yes, yes. Anatta, yes? Yes. Yes, yes okay. So, Bodhisattva vow says this. I go back to samsara no matter what, with my compassion. That means, through the compassion, they give up the anatta, they give up I. And that instantly, they actually have a source of nirvana. Now you say, I want to get out, I want to get out. But the problem is, who want to get out? Me, right? Yes. But then they have no me, who's getting out? Uh, I thought about it. No, no. Yeah. no that, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You understand, right? You agree with me, right? I want to get, I want to achieve nirvana. Then you meditate, then no I. Instantly, you know I, you have a path of already Nibbana. Right? I'm talking about Theravata sense. Exactly, Mahayana use different contexts. But the same thing. Through the compassion, I come back no matter what the samsara. Meaning, they have no I. They have I, they're so scared, they cannot come back. Mm. <laughs> but if I come back, even if I have... No, you're not going to come back. Even though you come back, you have no ego to come back. 
So does it mean I don't suffer or? No, exactly. Because this compassion result is no I. Realization of no I is no I. The both actually no I. Theravada use renunciation to be free from I, to realize no I. And the Mahayana use no I through compassion. But they, they reach the same thing, no I. Uh, but like the question is, according to what I know, in no. at least in Theravada, I don't have to reincarnate again. <laughs> but in samsara, even though I have no I, mm -hmm. Okay, I have no eye, but the experience is still there, and there will be experience of samsara. So that you need to ask the Theravada teacher, you know? Because Theravada teacher, they told me that, uh, not me, but I, I understand Theravada teachings, that no eye, still you are in a samsara, you know, world, whatever, but you're not going to suffer as like a sentient being suffer. You have experience of death, but you have no suffering of death. But you don't get reborn, that's yeah, the idea. You're, you're not going to get born, no. So the Bodhisattva, they come back, but they don't come back as with egoistic. They don't, no ego meaning no hair, they don't, they don't suffer. But sometimes, like imagine, like imagine she's a Bodhisattva and I'm depressed. Okay? And she can say, oh, I'm depressed too. Right? And I'm thinking she's depressed. But she's acting, she's depressing because she don't repress. She says, oh, I'm okay, I'm very good, I'm going to fix you. I'm going to say no, right? Hmm. So she said, I'm very, I'm very sick too. I said, really? And I did meditation. Help. Really? Okay, I want to meditate too. <laughs> so the Bodhisattva is like, a, like the very good, skillful means without any ego. And they do the exact the same thing, Nirvana, instantly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 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 You understand? A uh, little bit. A little bit. Good, yeah. good, good. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Little bit is good enough. You understand Theravada? Good. I like it. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Olga, and I uh, have a question about um, different lineages and different empowerments. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have a lot of, for example, 100 empowerments of Avalokiteshvara from mm -hmm. different lineage. Yeah. <coughs> and I would like to know what is the uh, purpose that we have uh, such requirements. For example, I've got some emp empowerment of, mm -hmm. of Avalokiteshvara in one lineage. Mm -hmm. And they say me, you should do this sadhana. Mm -hmm. But I can't do sadhana from uh, Avalokiteshvara from mm -hmm. another lineage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Why it's like this? Because the source of all empowerment? No, because th that is, uh, they want to keep it up, their uh, instruction, pure. You know, because there's so many masters, there's so many disciples, you know. So that's why I told you before, you know, nowadays students do very well that before they receive empowerment, that any requirements, they ask you. And it's very good. You should ask these requirements. And I did a lot of mistakes when I was young, you know. I don't feel sad to receive empowerment, but I feel sad that I did not carry on the practices. Mm. That's why I don't want to give any other tradition empowerment. I receive over a thousand empowerment, but I'm not going to give 800 empowerment to public. Majority of my empowerment is going to be Choling Tersar. Um, mm. But I, is this connected? So uh, then it should be like this. I've got uh, empowerment of mm. Avalokiteshvara mm -hmm. in one lineage. Mm -hmm. And in another lineage, uh, they could say to me, okay, you have empowerment of Avalokiteshvara mm -hmm. in another lineage, mm -hmm. but you give instructions and sadhana from our lineage. Mm -hmm. or no, or not possible. This I don't know. You need to ask. You know, no, because that usually it's not possible and I don't know. I don't know. This, 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 I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just chant Om Mani Pei Hung. Don't ask too many <laughs> things. <laughs> Okay, two more questions. And after this, who? Okay. So, Rinpochela, during the daily practice of sung offerings, or so Rinpochela, during the daily practice of sung offerings mm -hmm. and also protector offerings, mm -hmm. we need to chant Om Ma Hung for three times, mm -hmm. and then we realize the offerings become multiplied. Mm -hmm. But somehow I don't really trust 
uh, just by myself chanting mm. Om Mah Hong and mm. then make mm. the offering mm. multiplied. You don't need to trust yourself. Trust the mantra. Trust it. Mm. Same thing me. I don't trust myself. I trust the mantra. Then slowly you trust yourself through the mantra. Mm. This is what mantra do. Yeah. Beginning I don't trust, but you chant, 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 then you build up. This is how the city is. Yeah. The really source is actually within you, but you don't trust that. So you, you need to trust the mantra first. After chanting, chanting, you start getting more, more, more realization. Then one day you're going to start know. oh my goodness, you know, it's actually, you know, it's actually realized, you know, the, the teaching is actually within me. You know, the, the power of the blessings. So to trust the mantra. It's completely blessed by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Mahanguru. Imagine Mahanguru saying, oh ma, oh ma. Imagine that. And we're chanting after 1,000 years later, the same mantra. <coughs> this is amazing to think like that. Hmm? I still have, sorry, I still have questions. Okay. So uh, how, to go, how, t how to deal with sudden energy attacks and how to go beyond the fear of that? Anxiety? Like, for example, like the pain in the channels and anxiety, like fear for getting energy. What I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know, I know you have the pain. I know. 100% you have pain. I know you think it's channel. So, for me, you know, sometimes I feel heart is pumping, you know, this. The best way is just let it go, not hold on too much, and do the breathing exercise. You know, the ex ex exhale breathing, nine times, do that. Trust your exhale breathing, yeah? exhale breathing. Then you do relax, you know, let go. And don't, m mind start going, looking, you know, don't hold on, just let go. You know, then walk a little bit, exercise, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um. Thank you, Rinpoche. My name is Meredith. Um, also, I, I really hope that you come back and teach us again, please, and answer more questions when you come back from your travels. So please, please come teach us again. This is very valuable for all of us at RYI. And we really, truly appreciate everything that you're doing for us. So thank you so much. Um, my question is around the um, discussion you gave on Samayas, on Losar, mm -hmm. and you, um, you spoke uh, in a different way than I've heard it taught before about how to relate to other people. Can you please uh, brief, like, tell us, uh, give us that teaching again? <laughs> the word of Samaya I don't like. Of course I respect the Samaya because it's a tantric word. But sometimes it's very vague to reconnect to that word. So I prefer to say mm, care, love, respect, care, 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 care or love. Uh, some particular samaya, I prefer say care, uh, care, care, love. In Tibetan, I like to use word sewa. I don't know how to translate in English correctly. So, um, Chuju Lingba uh, said there are six uh, to focus of maintaining care as a tantric practitioner. You have care to your guru, practice devotion. You have care to yourself, start meditating, especially nature of mind. You have care to sentient beings, practice compassion. You have care to your own deity, practice the mantra, the deity mantra. You have care to Dharma siblings, maintain respect and good relationship. You have care to Mahanguru Padma Sambhava, do feast offering every lunar calendar, the tenth. And this is the six. And Chuju Lingba says, you maintain that six, you actually, uh, you can, you are, you are yogi, tantric, ma, ten, tantric practitioner, basic. So I, I like the six because it's easy, easily remember, you know, in finger. Some day says ten, some day says fourteen, and, uh, you know, it's very difficult accounting. To so I, I like the six. And it cover up very beautifully. And I like to add care because they really connect well. Yeah. Care to guru, practice devotion. Care to yourself, practice nature of mind. 
care to sentient being, practice compassion, care to the, your deity, chant mantra, care to, sentient, uh, care to dharma siblings, maintain good relationship, respectful each other, and care to Mahang Guru Padma Sambhava, practice Guru Rinpoche, feast offering every lunar calendar 10th. Okay? All right. This is a good way to stop today. <coughs> now dedication. Kunzando je jonje menje ne denjan zove lama ye je je drove dando malam ganda te dan dam je teng dere dro barai jo jam dan jing jing chong men jong wan dan ten dam lenje je be ye je. Jarwa zeje nam je tok barada da zom go zom do bare jen je lo ge wan di je wun kun zon nam ye je zo za de zon nam ye je dam ba gun yin do bara jo now from here begins the um, songs of realization of singe wang ju ma nyom ba ze wang a le je long ze ye je je Mare gong em bo le do ron re wa zoi je bo zoi je Go zom je dro ba je zo no dro je dom je ya re cha Tro nan ge de ba je zo no zom zo zo wa da re cha Cho ba yi je zo yi jya ra zo na nda na dam je la ve je Tam je yin zo dem zo na nji ya ma yin je ya nja E ma e ma dam be ga dren la e ma da ge zi de nye ba nda Nying jong la dere yau ba de le men Zhe jil da ma de dara nang ba shu Zag ba rang zhe jong wa rang zara ten Dren ba rang ruru zang dara ve je lu Senge wan jo nye da nya im jura ne Dara wa nam je ngkara wa dong do now this is the lamb offering for lamb uh, lamb offering of the yamgumi pam rambuchi compose re ba ga da nan za ra ma ra me de re zen jen goro ben jong la la bo re be ga ra ja ma jurun ro Now this poor line is for reborn to uh, Guru Rinpoche's pure land composed by Choju Lingba. Deme shi da yir mim be man jun rang nang da be zang do yi ba re shi na re yir mim ma ju nyong mim ngang de ne nam da jing du ji varai jo The six Vaja line supplication to Mahang Guru Padma Sambhava Revealed by Nchuju Lingba Spoke by Nguru Rinpoche Te zan zan ji guru rinpo Che ng dro im gandha
Now this whole line I think is composed by Dotukchen, previous Dotukchen I think. Ujin Rimbo in Jala is over the Gajin, Paji, Minjun Jin, Dunjin, Samba and Ruba, Chodan to Mong, Rosa do so, Sonam de Tamje, Sigbanya, Tomde Nibe, Danam Pam, Yega Najim, Balan to Bai, Sibin, Solin, Rolova, Jova. Thank you, Rangjung Yishi um, Institute and professors and students and organizers and uh, people who's working here and people who's watching in the internet. Thank you very much uh, to giving me opportunity to answer some questions and I hope um, what I answer benefit you a little bit. Thank you.